great. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for doing this <clears throat> interview. Um, I've got to start by asking you, I've always had this picture of the Icelandic Northern Lights. Have you in fact seen Northern Lights? <laughs> oh yes, many times. And they're green and blue and yellow. And dance pink. across the sky, yeah. Incredible. It can be quite, quite amazing. Yeah, mm, that's on my bucket list, as they say. Um, mm -hmm. Let's start at the very beginning. Where and when were you born? I was born here in Reykjavik, the capital of, of Iceland, in 1956. What month? I'm interested in your astrological sign. <laughs> I see, uh, on the 16th of November, so I'm a Scorpio. And I, I think of Scorpio people as intense, deep feelings, passionate, maybe sometimes challenging to bring the feelings to the surface. Does any of that apply to you? Uh, I'm usually pretty calm, so uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, since this book is about men and you are a man, I'm interested in what messages you got growing up in Iceland about what it was to be a good man. And I'm, I'm asking that because I, the young men that I've interviewed in the States said they got a lot of messages about don't, don't be like a girl, don't be a sissy, don't be a crybaby that kind of thing. And, and I wonder if, if it was any different in Iceland. Well, I don't remember uh, those messages. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. What I, what I mainly remember is um, being told to be uh, a good provider when, uh, when I started my own family that I should take as good care of my family as, uh, as my father did with his. Uh, and secondly, uh, that uh, you don't hit a girl. That's the only don't that I really remember. Interesting. Uh, yeah. You never heard big boys don't cry, don't be a sissy? I, uh, not that I recall, it's, it's quite possible, but, but, but nothing that has really stuck with me, at least. Uh, I remember crying, and, and uh, I don't remember anyone saying that I shouldn't. Oh, that's fabulous. Um, how many children do you have? I know you have four, five now beautiful grandchildren. Yeah, uh, I have three children and, and yes, five grandchildren, two, two daughters and one son. And did you raise your son any differently than you were raised? Or did you raise your daughters any differently than you raised your son? Uh, what, what did you notice in terms of gender and child rearing? Well, there was no, there was no con conscious dis decision at least on, on, on raising them differently. Uh, my son is the youngest of those uh, three, so I was better ex experienced. Uh, so, um, and he had, of course, two elder sisters who assisted in bringing him up. Uh, but no, I mean, uh, he tried to play football, didn't like it, so he was not pushed in that direction. He liked, uh, he tried, what's it called, when you have swords and, and, and go fencing. Uh, fencing. Yeah, uh, and he practiced that for uh, for a number of, uh, of years. Um, but... Uh, They've all, they've all three been involved in, 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 in music. He is the one who stuck with it the longest, and he has a band now, and they're going on a European tour if COVID-19 allows. But um, 
No, there, were, there was never any conscious decision to raise him differently from the way we raised the girls. We always tried to emphasize independence and uh, uh, doing uh, what you really feel like doing. What, what surprised me about um, raising my son is that I didn't give him guns but he and his friends would take sticks and go, <laughs> and I don't see girls doing that. So I wonder if, if you saw that, if it's the influence of the media or it's some kind of ancient evolutionary legacy that men are hunters and women are gatherers. I don't know. What did, what did you notice about that? Well, something similar. My, my, my wife is very much against guns and, and uh, we never bought guns uh, for our uh, for our children, but uh, yeah, he well, he certainly found sticks and, and uh, other uh, uh, things to to use as a as a gun. <laughs> it's difficult to recall, but uh, no, I don't think my daughters uh, did. Did that, and he was never he was never really uh, all that active in that department. Uh, he, uh, I think, he more or less went along with the other uh, with the other guys, but um, he also uh, he also played with dolls, perhaps because he had older uh, sisters. And, and I don't recall him being teased for that any more than I see now in my grandsons uh, who, who also uh, carry dolls around and, 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 and play with them. And, and that doesn't seem to be a problem. Mm. In, in, I don't think I would have played with dolls. You would not have? I don't think so, no. No, I don't think so. What, what siblings did you have growing up? None. Uh, I'm a single child. Ah. Um, so the, there might have been some changes over over the decades. Um, what? Before we go into your more into your background, I'm I'm really concerned that around the world, except sub-Saharan Africa, there are more women in college and graduating from college and going to professional school. I wonder if you see that in Iceland as well, or if you're more egalitarian, you don't have that as an issue. No, it's very similar, uh, similar uh, here. Uh, I think that the, uh, uh, graduates from the University of Iceland uh, between 65 and 70 percent are, are, are women. So, uh, but this is seen as a, uh, as a problem. And uh, we had a couple of conferences discussing what can be done. Uh, and I mean, generally, women are outperforming men and boys in all, uh, all uh, stages of, 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 of education and in, in all areas. I mean, They've always outformed boys in, or almost always in, in, in reading and, and, and so on, but now they're outperforming them in, in, uh, in, in mathematics and, and, and uh, similar, similar issues. Uh, but we, uh, I don't think we really know why the boys are not showing up in, 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 in schools. And, uh, most of them seem to be doing fine, even though they don't get an uh, edu education. At least they still earn more than than uh, than women. Um, but something keeps them away. I mean, and, and, and one idea is that the general feminization of teachers is an uh, issue here they more or less see, more and more see uh, all teachers from, from, uh, from kindergarten and to the university, uh, it's, it's, it's all, uh, all women. But 
Um, I'm not convinced that that is the uh, at least the major uh, explanation. Uh, we know from more traditionally masculine uh, countries such as such as uh, Great Britain that um, in in some areas at least uh, boys refuse to learn to read because they regard that as sissy and uh, something that only women uh, women do but but I doubt very much that that is an issue uh, here so I, 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 I really don't have an answer but but the development is similar here as in as in uh, other countries in the world and I mean as you said it's everywhere it's everywhere um, Warren Farrell says that part of it is boys don't get the kind of encouragement because when boys were more likely to go to university and be in STEM subjects, then there was a movement, oh, we've got to encourage girls, encourage girls go into the STEM areas. And his thinking is, and I've heard this from some of my interviewees, is that girls get encouraged in a way that boys don't. Um, and so they figure, well, this school's not for me. And Warren says, boys here, the future is female. Uh, you know, men are sexual harassers, men are the problem. So there's uh, what one researcher calls, you know, a lack of positive identity in terms of who I am as a man. Yes, well, quite, quite, uh, quite possible. We we certainly had that uh, discussion here. One of my colleagues who has uh, five five boys, she uh, cancelled her uh, subscription to a feminist magazine because she felt that uh, boys and men were being portrayed as uh, yeah, well as bad, and, and she didn't want her boys to see that um, but I, uh, I well I don't find it all that overwhelming to, to, to tell the truth but perhaps they uh, they experience it in that uh, way and, and of course girls spend more time with their families uh, than, uh, than boys do uh, and perhaps they are there more encouraged uh, to to educate them uh, themselves um, but I'm, I'm 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 still not uh, i'm still not sure i think it's a it's a complicated uh, problem and i don't think at least that it is because we have uh, been uh, giving girls any uh, unfair advantages. Uh, it's it's more that we have removed obstacles in their way, and and, and therefore they are outperforming and, and and doing so doing so well. But um, perhaps we need to work more on on, on, on the boys. But I just don't I just don't know. And they don't seem all that unhappy, at least. Well, maybe this is probably too simplistic, but maybe there's something to what you said that economically they don't see the advantage to going to university when they can be in the band or, you know, make a lot of money as an auto mechanic or whatever. So it's, it's a cost analysis of how can, is it worth it to, I, is your university free? Because, you know, here people graduate with $25,000, $35,000 in debt. So going to college is a big drain. Well, there are no fees, but, uh, but of course, if you're not working as well, then you have to take uh, study loans. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, well, we graduate also with 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 a heavy heavy burden, uh, but uh, it it certainly uh, certainly occurred to me that 
at least here, this is much more of a problem in the areas outside of the capital. Uh, that boys are not uh, seeking higher uh, higher education. And there they, of course, see men without uh, any education doing very well. I mean, fishermen or, 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 or even manual laborers. So they don't really see any financial uh, incentive to, 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 to seek education. It's, it's much more equal in the, in the, in the capital area. That, that's significant. I mean, that means that it really, probably there is an economic motivation for sure. Yes, probably. It, 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 is, it is a combination of, of, of gender uh, and class in, 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 in a way. Hmm. I, I, the, I, only, the, the, the only educated people that they see are, on the, are, are teachers and, and uh, uh, and if they are lucky enough to have a doctor in the in in, in the in, in the village, and more often than not, uh, both are female. Hmm. So it's a role models and an economic situation. It, it looks like um, I I read that in China they are giving affirmative action to male college graduates, so women have to have higher scores to get in than men. <laughs> so. Uh, they're doing reverse what, what we think of as affirmative action. Um, the, it's interesting to me that Nordic countries, including Iceland, are among the most committed to gender role equality, and they're also the most among the most happiest. Um, people are happy partly because they don't have to worry about medical care. If I get sick, I'm going to go bankrupt like in the States. And they, they know that I'm going to have access to affordable education, childcare, elder care, um, housing. So do you, could you elaborate on why the Nordic countries are so committed to equality and why they're happy? <laughs> Well, the two are closely closely connected. Uh, I, I think, as you all already said, I mean, the, it is immensely important that you don't have to be constantly worrying about your health, uh, the taking care of your children or your uh, elderly elderly families, family members. Uh, or that the poor can't afford uh, to give their children education and, and, and so on. So I, I think that that, uh, to a high degree, uh, explains the, the, the happiness. Uh, the weather is certainly not a contributing factor. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and then uh, why they do it? Well, <clears throat> I think politics uh, have a lot to do, to do with it. I, I think that this is the legacy of the domination of the social democrats in, in, uh, in all the Nordic countries. And even though Iceland has been the exception, since we've never had a really large uh, social democratic party, uh, the effects from the uh, other Nordic countries provided a spillover. I mean, we wanted to be as good as, uh, as them. And then, of course, the party that uh, was the dominating party for most of the 20th century, the independence uh, party, uh, in order to be a dominating party, they had to secure a lot of uh, the working class vote, which meant that they adopted many welfare uh, ideas from the Nordic uh, countries, made them their own. Perhaps gave them a Icelandic twist, but still made, made sure that, the, uh, that we had a welfare system. So, uh, yeah, I think that politics are, are the main explain, explaining factor. Uh, 
But then it's the chicken and the egg. Why were the Nordic countries open to and supportive of social democratic policies? <laughs> Good question. Um, to which I don't have any good uh, good uh, answer. Um, what what people usually say is small homogeneous population made it, it made everyone feel I I want to support you because we're in this together. And you mentioned in an email that men were away as fishermen and women were responsible for the farm or whatever. So they're used to both genders being important financially. Yes, yes. Uh, um, that's probably one of the uh, explanations. But uh, on the other hand, during the, uh, during the 50s and, 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 and 60s, I think we had a very uh, similar uh, gen we had very similar gender roles to uh, what characterized other western countries i mean the the the, the housewife and, and, and provider were seen as the uh, um, ultimate goal or, or the best uh, best of all worlds so uh, it wasn't until the End of the 60s, 68, and all, 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 all that uh, wonderful revolutionary time uh, when we began to see any changes uh, in, in this. And uh, no, again, <laughs> kind of embarrassing that I don't have any good explanation for all this, but. Uh, Perhaps, uh, well. Oh, you also mentioned that it's that there's not a strong like Catholic conservative tradition in terms of religion. No, no, no. I, at least in, in, in Iceland, I, religion plays a, a very small part in, 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 in everything that we do or, or, or say or, or, or think. Uh, we a few times so we had uh, people trying to form a, a Christian party, but, but but they never succeeded in, in, in uh, gaining any seats on in, in our our parliament. Uh, so uh, people, except for uh, with special occasions when when people are being buried and, and so on, then. They, I really don't care what what the church or what God has to say about uh, about anything. <laughs> um, and Catholicism was almost uprooted completely in the uh, in the Nordic countries. Um, and and uh, that certainly plays a plays a role. I mean, I, the Norwegians have a have a fairly strong. Christian uh, Christian party, and, and, and that is the one that has mainly uh, opposed steps towards gender equality, particularly within the families. Mm. Uh, they advocate a, a, a traditional uh, family uh, family roles uh, with mother as the main caregiver and the father as the main the main uh, provider, but. Uh, and because they have been needed in order for for the uh, parties to the right to 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 form a government, then they have had uh, some success in their uh, in their efforts. But uh, this has not been the case uh, case here. Uh, you know what's we've really also had a fairly strong uh, or have had fairly strong uh, women's movements. But uh, again, I, I I couldn't say why they have been uh, why they have been strong, except by uh, again invoking uh, tradition that uh, Icelandic women have traditionally been 
forced to be the heads of the households, both because of the this seasonal character of, 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 the, uh, of the Icelandic economy, and also because we lost uh, a lot of young men in uh, who drowned at, 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 at sea. So there were a lot of, of, of young widows uh, were then, of course, mainly responsible for, for the raising of children and, and for working for the, uh, for the family. But... Um, yeah, I, uh, I think this is all part of the explanation, but but, but uh, I I don't have any grand narrative to to <laughs> to explain it all. What What's really really striking to me, comparing North America and the Nordic countries, is that we train children. You should be number one. You should be a winner. You should compete. You want your team to win. If you win. You get prizes and little little badges that say I'm number one. Whereas in the Nordic countries, to stand out is to be a tall poppy. I think the Chinese say is is seen as um, uh, bad, uh, unseemly, inconsiderate. And I I mentioned to you in an email that a friend of mine taught in Sweden taught physical education in American. And he posted uh, a, one of his students got an award for an athletic event. And the administration was very upset and told him, take that down. We don't want to have people stand out like this. So that seems to me a crucial difference and really interesting. So how does that play out that you shouldn't stand out? Well. Well, at least as far as uh, children, uh, let's say up to the uh, teenage years, at, uh, at least, uh, they are encouraged to to play, uh, to participate, uh, and to cooperate. Uh, I live next to a fairly large uh, football uh, center. And they have uh, uh, every 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 summer they 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 gather teams of uh, young girls and young boys uh, for a uh, week of of uh, football playing, and <clears throat> everyone gets a medal. <laughs> uh, it's not that. Uh, in the end, there is this one team that has won the most. They just play one game and then they play another, and maybe they win one and lose the other. Everyone gets a medal in the uh, in the uh, in the end. So it's more the uh, idea that children they learn by uh, they learn by playing, and if we introduce uh, competition or at least two fears a competition, then we take the play element uh, away and we're doing something very different from, from letting them learn by, uh, by playing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we, uh, that we never compete or that we never encourage uh, excellence. Uh, that is, of course, uh, done uh, later on in, in, in life. And it is... Uh, for many boys, it's the you know, you know, uh, they dream about playing for the for playing football for the Icelandic uh, national team, uh, and I hesitated a bit because I just now remember that I read an interview with a teen uh, ten year old girl in, in the paper the other day, and and uh, she also had that dream. She she wanted to play for the. Icelandic national uh, national football team, uh, women of of course, but uh, so, so yeah, I think that in general, up to the ages of the 12, 13, 14 or something like that, we more or less encourage cooperation and play. After that, it's more of a competitive uh, environment, at least in sport. Uh, 
and, and we've had some debates about uh, uh, whether we should grade uh, children or, or, or uh, grade the examination of, of, of children. Uh, and, and we still haven't quite settled that, uh, that debate. But at least for young children, uh, they don't get a grade. They, they, they've told what they've done right and what they've done wrong. But but they don't get A's and B's and so on. Hmm. What, what, how old are they when they start getting grades? Um, my guess is, but, but I'm guessing now, is that that's around uh, 12, 12, something like that. Okay. I was in Sweden um, studying the social supports for families. I stayed in a family hotel called Hasselby where they had communal childcare and dinners and kitchens and that kind of thing. And what, what I was told when I was in Sweden is that even houses are not supposed to stand out. I mean, that they all should be pretty much the same color palette or whatever. There's kind of strict rules about we don't stand out as individuals or in our architecture. Okay. Well, um, yeah, perhaps that's the case in, 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 in Sweden. It's certainly not in, in, in Iceland. Uh, when you come here, you will see that uh, houses in the same neighborhood are of all sizes and shapes and okay. painted in very different colors and so on and so so forth. Okay. So uh, we're not uh, we're not following the Swedes in that direction. At least. What What about? I know that that some Nordic countries have had alcohol problems partly because of the long dark winters. It, I guess it's comforting to drink. And I, I've also been told by Swedes that drinking is the one time when you can be kind of emotionally expressive and not be contained. So drinking is like, okay, I can let, let my hair down. Is, mm. is alcohol an issue like that in Iceland? Well, yes, I suppose it, uh, I suppose it is, uh, perhaps partly with the older generation. Uh, we had a we had a rather strange span on beer in in Iceland, uh, right up to 1984, I think it was when 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 that ban was finally lifted. So what we drank uh, was mainly strong liquor. I mean vodka and, and uh, Icelandic. Uh, Black Death is, is the is the name for the, <laughs> the for the death, for the Icelandic uh, strong uh, liquor, uh, and of course people got very drunk, uh, and then they lose their inhibitions. And uh, uh, I, I I once uh, interviewed. Uh, a number of policemen on, on uh, for a for a project, and one of the things that we discussed was uh, that they, of course, often uh, uh, encounter very difficult uh, situations, uh, the children and, and, and something something like that. And and, uh, and I asked, uh, so uh, do we discuss that? And, and they said that that had been slowly changing so that now they don't leave the uh, police uh, building before they have discussed uh, difficult uh, situations that they have encountered. Prior to that, you just went home and said nothing and, and until you got drunk. And then you cried and 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 uh, all, all that all that stuff. It, it reminded me very much of the reminds us of uh, young men in in, 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 in in Germany who who were talking about their fathers who had participated in the war and never talked about it unless they were drunk and and then again they they, they cried and they cried a lot. 
So, but that has uh, that has changed. I mean, uh, strong liquor is really on a front upon today. People drink beer or they drink light wine and, and, and uh, so on. But um, well, it it gets very dark in in, in Iceland in in, in winter uh, winter time. I mean, we we are now what in in uh, the end of October and. Uh, it's getting dark uh, outside. It's uh, what is it? Uh, getting to getting to six o'clock, and um, it will be dark in the morning, uh, up to around nine or or, or ten, uh, and it will continue to get worse. Mm. So, uh, but but I, I thought that Finland was the prime example of this. The 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 fairly strong, silent Finnish uh, man who never showed any emotion except after drinking two or three bottles of vodka uh, and sitting in a sauna. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we are not that emotional, at least, least uh, of officially. Huh. That, that's an interesting phenomenon that around the world you think of Japanese men after work going to the bars and getting drunk together or British, Australian, I guess Kiwi men go to the neighborhood pub and drink and commune together. So it, it seems like male bonding support, I'm, do you think this is accurate, is, is uh, supported by alcohol and by oh, yes. yeah, 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 certainly. I mean, uh, the, generally, it, it, it has not or was not in the 20th century seen as something uh, uh, fitting for a man to, 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 show, to show his uh, emotions, uh, at least not if they were, uh, uh, if, if he was sad or, or, or anything like that. And I, I remember a, a read once the reminds us of a man who was a, a seaman here uh, at around the turn of the last century. Uh, and he uh, lost three children and uh, he posted in the book that even though he felt sad, he didn't think that anyone had seen that on him. He, he managed to suppress his, his, his emotions and, and, and said that, that it, the same went for his wife. Wow. Uh, and they had that as a goal, but nobody would see that they were sad about their loss. Um, rather strange, but, but I think that uh, perhaps because the, the uh, struggle for life was so hard and so intense that really you you needed to be able to trust all on the uh, ship's crew that they wouldn't uh, in, in, in facing storm or, or something like that that they wouldn't break down and cry or, or anything like that they were needed to at the at the at the oars so, so that might be one of the uh, one of the reasons right and, you know, the military doesn't want men who are sensitive and cry. Patriarchy doesn't want mm -hmm. men who are sensitive because then they wouldn't do hard, you know, work away from home for so many hours. So the whole systems are set up so that men don't get in touch with their sensitivity in a way. Do you think that's a fair statement? Yes, I think so. But I also think that it is uh, changing and it is rapidly uh, changing. You see that, for example, here in Iceland, there were more and more men come out and talk about uh, difficult experiences uh, that they've had in, 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 in their youth. They, they, they talk about uh, sexual abuse, uh, talk about being raped, and many of them, or at least some of them, say, I'm standing out now and talking about this because I have children. I want them to understand 
why I am like I am, and that they should not be afraid to talk about good and bad experiences and their feelings a, a, a around that. Mm. So I, I really think that this is uh, this is changing, perhaps more rapidly in, in, in Iceland than in other countries, since uh, we, of course, don't have any army, so, so, so boys are not taught there not to, uh, not to show emotions and, uh, and, and uh, so on. So uh, one of one of the one of the lucky things about being an Icelander. Yes. Um, before we leave politics, I for a while I was following the pirate party that started in Sweden and then went to Iceland, and I was interested in Brigitte Jones' daughter because they really tried to be very egalitarian, very democratic in how they made decisions, and then and she ended up quitting because she felt like their values weren't actually being applied. What, can you tell me something about the Pirate Party and Brigitte Jones' daughter? Well, they are still around. Uh, they, they did fairly well at our recent uh, elections, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, and they have, as you said, uh, they have tried to be egalitarian but uh, there are so many difficulties in applying that uh, idea. And uh, as you said, Birgitta felt that they were not doing what they were preaching. So, so, so she left for a while. But uh, I mean, w one thing is you want to discuss things and in, in, in utopia, you continue to discuss until you have reached uh, agreement that all can sign up to. Consensus. Yeah, but, 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 but that, of course, means that you can take the time <laughs> to <laughs> engage in those discussions. Yeah. And uh, single women with three children, they just don't have that time. So, 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 so voting is, uh, in a way, necessary for their voices to be to be heard. So uh, this is what the um, the red stockings when they were uh, here in, 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 in the in the 60s and 70s, they tried the same and, and they saw okay we are stuck here with uh, well educated uh, single women who in the end make all decisions because the others have gone home to cook uh, for their children. Uh, so, 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 so it's a very, very difficult principle to uh, to apply, and I, I don't think they have succeeded. But they are, have certainly been a fresh wind in in, in Icelandic uh, politics, and, and the the mayor that uh, we had, a good friend of, of Birgitta's, Jón Gnar, uh, we had for four years in, 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 in as a mayor in in, in Reykjavík. He, he certainly changed uh, many things. Was uh, he a pirate? Least. Well, I don't think he was any, uh, he, he was a member of the uh, pirate uh, party, but he certainly shared their ideas and, and, and visions. Uh, and uh, he, he and Birgitta, I think she mentioned it some, some that they read a lot together about uh, anarchism, discussed it a lot, took drugs together and, and, and so on and, and, and so forth. And uh, yeah, they, they, they were a fresh wind. Mm -hmm. what, what's an example of something that Mayor did that was, that was progressive? Well, he wants well progressive and progressive. It was uh, it was upsetting at least. <laughs> he he sometimes uh, uh, when the foreign guests visiting, he he sometimes uh, wore uh, here now what's it called Star Wars suit when he when he to, to, uh, <laughs> when he met them. Uh, um, what is that? I'm not sure what that is. Uh, you, you know the films Star Wars? 
Oh, he wore the, the white suits? Yeah, so, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Stormtrooper outfit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he was very, uh, I mean, he, he didn't take things seriously, and he said, we have a short time here, and in, 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 we have a short life. We should enjoy it. <laughs> do things differently and, and, and not be all that formal. But I, I, I couldn't pinpoint anything uh, really or, or something that changed things for, for in, in, in the long run. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, and of course, he, he, he and his party, uh, it doesn't exist anymore. It was called the best party. Uh, they they uh, well they were left leaning, but the, 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 they didn't get the uh, enough votes to uh, uh, rule by themselves. They needed support, and they got it from the Social Democratic Party. And, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, well, in many ways, the, the, it, it was it was a good four years period, but uh, but uh, I don't think much is left. Hmm. I have to tell you as a footnote, I officiate at weddings sometime. And the last wedding I officiated, the groom arranged for the best men to be a big surprise. They all marched out in stormtrooper outfits. <laughs> <laughs> and then they played the music, da -da 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 -da, the, the Star Wars music as they walked okay. out with the bridesmaids on their arms. <laughs> It's on my YouTube channel. I, I had it videotaped. I thought it was so funny. Um, so let's let's go back to what led you to be an academic. Why why did you decide to go through the arduous chore of be, getting a PhD and studying in Lund in Sweden and that path? Uh, well, I've always been very interested in in, in, in social issues, and uh, I, I was never in any doubt that that this was what I wanted to do with my uh, with my life. I I wanted to research social issues, and and uh, and I wanted to make a difference. Uh, I think that uh, well, that were the main. Uh, you know, that, that's what motivated me. Uh, but but uh, back then I I, uh, I was mainly interested in classes, so I uh, I wrote my thesis on the uh, origins and organization of the Icelandic bourgeoisie, the first Icelandic uh, capitalists. Uh, gender played uh, no role there, and they were almost all male. And, and, and I wasn't all that interested in, in gender issues at that uh, at that time. Uh, then I then we moved back to Iceland in 1990, and uh, uh, well, I, I was out of work for a, or in and out of, of work for a couple of a couple of years. But then I got work at the Center for Gender Equality, which is a, a governmental. Uh, agency and uh, they had then a, a men's committee uh, they had handpicked uh, a few five or six five or six men who were <clears throat> entrusted with the task of uh, trying to get more men interested in gender equality and to get them to participate in the discussions on gender equality. And this was a very uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, they had a lot of ideas. They were very committed, had a lot of ideas and it was I was made a secretary for this uh, for this committee, and and uh, that really was uh, a changing factor in 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 my life. I got interested in gender, of course, uh, and then particularly the situation and possibilities of uh, of men 
I started reading uh, articles and, and books and of course back then it was certainly not an uh, task that you couldn't accomplish to read everything that had been written about men and uh, masculinities. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I, perhaps we had one uh, journal uh, that focused on, on masculinities. Uh, now, of course, I think we have 10 or, or, or 11. So, wow. so, so it exploded in, in, in just a few, uh, few years. Um, but at least uh, that's, that's how I got involved in, in, in these, uh, these issues. And the, originally this committee was appointed just for two years. So, so they decided that in order to make a difference, uh, they would have to focus on, on just one or two, uh, two issues. And they decided to focus uh, firstly on, uh, on uh, men's violence against, uh, against women. Uh, and they reasoned that as long as women as a group think that they have reason to fear men as a group, then there can be no gender equality. Uh, so, so, so we should focus on, on that. Uh, and concretely, both to raise awareness and, and secondly, to uh, initiate a psychological treatment for, for, violent, for violent men which we managed to do in the, in the end, it took, took several years. And secondly, they wanted to focus on law, the law on uh, parental leave, uh, to change the law on parental, parental leave. And the, the, the struggle suggested by, uh, by that committee uh, was in fact the structure that was later adopted in, 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 in 2000. Uh, it is almost completely uh, what what uh, this committee suggested. So so it made a it made a huge uh, huge difference, and it was it was very rewarding to be working uh, for them. Both because generally uh, we were well received, particularly among among women, uh, perhaps who. Many of them said, at, uh, "At last, finally, we have." <laughs> We have the men on board, uh, but also generally in, 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 in society. And so much was changing. I mean, we, we first suggested this uh, structure for the parental leave in 95, I think. And, and I mean, five years later, it was a reality. So. What, what is it now? How, how much paid time off does the mother and the father get? It is 12 months uh, long and uh, each parent has uh, six months, uh, but uh, they have six weeks that they can transfer to each other. So what, what if, is it, in, is it a rule that if you don't use your six months, you lose it? Or could the father say, I don't want my six months, I want my wife to take the year? Oh, no. Oh. It's non-transferable except for those six weeks. Yeah, uh, that's the only way if you if you want to get fathers right. in, in, involved. That's their only real possibility. What what's uh, the use? I mean, what what percent of new fathers take six months, or do they take a month, or what? What do you see in terms of utilization? Well, we 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 don't know about the uh, six months since it was. First, uh, that uh, uh, extension of the uh, of the leave was uh, adopted uh, this year, 2021. 20, oh. We had nine months up to uh, up to that. Uh, three for fathers and three for mothers and three that uh, they could could share. Mm. Uh, around ninety percent of, of of fathers make use of their. Uh, and, and they the, take on average the time that only they can uh, can use. Does does the employer pay the salary or does the state pay for my leave time? Both. Uh, the uh, all those who pay wages in Iceland 
they pay a certain insurance levy, uh, which is used for a number of uh, purposes. One of it is the uh, parental uh, parental leave. Uh, so it's channeled into a into a parental leave fund, which pays the the, the uh, parents when they are on on uh, on leave. So the uh, that, I think that this sorry. The employer doesn't pay into the fund. It's all through the salary to the government. Well, they they don't pay directly to 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 the employee who is on on uh, on parental uh, parental leave. It's indirectly through that uh, through that insurance uh, levy. You know, it, which again is something that I think is generally necessary because if the individual employers would have to pay. Uh, particularly, new firms probably wouldn't hire uh, young women. I mean, they... right. So, so, so I think this is a necessary structure. Yes, it's amazing to me that right now Congress is trying to get paid parental leave as part of this package that they're of social supports. And Joe Manchin, who obviously cannot give birth, says, "No, I don't want paid parental leave." So. I guess they're not going to include that in the package because they need his vote. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. 2021. Yeah, I think the states are, are one of the very few countries in the world that don't have a paid parental leave. Right. Pakistan has nine months or something. If Pakistan can do it, the U.S. can do it. So it's it's unbelievable. And it, and it creates, as we talked about in the beginning, stress. And then that creates unhappiness and health problems, and health problems are expensive. So it's it's really short-sighted and, and yeah, um, harmful for everyone. I, I, I agree, and we have seen many positive effects of this uh, uh, system of parental leave that we adopted in, in, in 2000. One of which is that people who have or pa parents that have where, where, where the father has made use of the parental leave, they are much more uh, unlikely to divorce than, than, than other parents. They seem to be happier to uh, together. And we've also seen huge changes in the in the division of, of, uh, of care. Uh, for the uh, for the children, not only during the time when people are on parental leave, but for at least three years after after the child is uh, is born. Why is that? Uh, well, we we foreign research tells us that if fathers get engaged in childcare when the child is very small, just babies, they continue to be good carers. Uh, they, 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 they both like it and also they gain confidence that they can do this as well as the, uh, as the mother. So uh, I think that is the main uh, explanation. When we asked, we asked parents who, who had their first child, Three years before the before the change, and and uh, when those children were three years old, uh, care was divided equally uh, in about forty percent of uh, of families. We are now up to seventy five percent. So so wow. it's a huge difference. Does that include if I take my child to childcare at work? Am I then I'm. I'm the one who's responsible and that is included in doing childcare if I take it to a group childcare situation? Well, we, we, we just ask parents, <clears throat> first, time, first time parents, to keep a diary. Uh, how did you divide the care this day, this week, this month, and so on and so forth? We don't ask them to specify in, in, in what way they did it. But is your guess, usually it's the mom, sorry. Is it your guess that they're not staying home from work? They're but they're they're responsible. I'm going to take the child to child care center. Uh, uh, 
those who uh, ch children who are under the age of, of, of one. Well, okay, if under one, then I can get paid leave. But after a year, I probably can't stay at home and no. take care of the child because uh, yeah. I need the money. Yeah, after, 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 after a year, almost all children in, 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 in Iceland enter uh, kindergartens. Oh, I mean, here I think of kindergarten as starting at age five, but do you oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. It's like with the yeah. French called crèche. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know about that, but but, but around 98% of, of, of uh, two years uh, two years old and, and, and over uh, are in kindergartens. Ah, uh, and are those kindergarten teachers trained the same way as other elementary school teachers? And are they paid? Yeah. So, because here, people who care for two-year-olds are not paid well, they're mostly women, and they they work hard for very little money. Yeah, well, mostly women here as, as, uh, as well, and uh, no, they certainly should be paid, should be paid more. Uh, it's not all that, uh, not all that bad, but, but, but uh, the, the, yeah, the, the, they get, uh, at least now, they get similar salaries to, uh, to those teaching in elementary schools. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Um, what, to get back to the other theme of, of the Gender Equality Center, what what did you find worked to reduce male violence? And some men's rights people in the state say, well, women often initiate it. So you can't just say it's a problem of male violence. Well, uh, reading the uh, international studies, uh, then it's certainly not only men who are violent towards women, there are women that are violent to men. But as we move up, I mean, the, the, the more serious the violence gets, the more uh, repetitive it is, then we find more and more men as perpetrators and fewer and fewer uh, women. So and, and and I think that we should we should acknowledge uh, that uh, we should acknowledge that women can be violent in domestic relationships as, as as well as men, because for one thing we know that they they are they they, they, they can be violent, and 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 secondly if we portray it as only men being violent, then we are uh, well we we, we are back to some kind of uh, essentialism and that men are generally bad, which I don't think is good for, for gender equality. And of course, it's, it's just plainly uh, wrong. Yeah. But, but men are more violent in, 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 in general than, uh, than women. We had an awareness raising uh, campaign, week long campaign, uh, and, and got all the major uh, newspapers and, and TV stations in, in, in engaged in that. And we published a, a small pamphlet just called uh, Violence. And we distributed it into all uh, schools and encouraged teachers to use it as a, as a teaching tool to, to talk about, to talk about uh, violence with the with the kids and then uh, as, I, as i said before we 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 have this concrete goal of, of uh, getting up a psychological treatment for for uh, for violent men uh, and managed to do that but unfortunately this is the one area where i don't think I could say that we have moved in the right direction. Oh. I don't think we have moved in a wrong direction either. I just think that the 
violence is on a similar level as it has been for decades. Wow. Uh, probably got uh, worse during the uh, COVID-19 uh, close downs. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but I, I see no... Uh, this is, of course, uh, difficult to, uh, to to measure. I mean, the, what people call violence today, they wouldn't have called violence for 50 years on, 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 uh, and so on. Uh, but both here and, and uh, what I've seen in the other Nordic countries, the, the level of violence seems to be, uh, domestic violence seems to be very similar to what it has been for, uh, for decades. Mm. Do, you, do you, is it, overly simplistic to say that perpetrators were victims themselves growing up or saw their, let's say their fathers be violent. It's a learned behavior or is that not accurate? Uh, some of them certainly, uh, certainly did. Uh, uh, I think that the general figure is that uh, around 30% of, uh, of men of violent men uh, have uh, came from a violent uh, violent household, and therefore are, are repeating what they uh, what they saw. But it's 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 certainly not uh, anything that is uh, many many men who come from violent uh, homes don't repeat that. Uh, in their, in their own families, and there are men who came from very peaceful and, and, and happy homes mm. who become violent men. So, so there's no, necess no, no necessity. Is it, do you find any correlations with alcohol, drug use, uh, frustration in terms of your job success? I don't know, what, what, do, you, what do you see as our impetuses for me to be violent as a man? Well, we've only had uh, two uh, surveys on on uh, on violence in in, in Iceland, and uh, uh, they didn't show any relationship with work or poverty or or, or anything uh, anything wow. like that. Interesting. Uh, but uh, alcohol and drug use uh, certainly plays a, a role. Uh, but in what way? I mean, uh, alcohol is uh, I'm not quite sure how, 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 to, how to put that, but uh, it can be an excuse. I mean, uh, you have already decided that you are going to be abusive, be, be beat your beat your wife, and then you uh, have a few beers and and uh, bring up the encouragement or use that as an excuse for for, for what you for what you do. But um, it, it certainly is a is an uh, is a factor, uh, as we see in, in in just I mean street brawling and and, and uh, street violence uh, when people are drunk they. Well, they're just more stupid than they usually are. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but, but, uh, unfortunately, only one of those uh, surveys asked both men and uh, women uh, and asked both about their uh, experience as a victim and as a perpetrator. And it was highly interesting that the one who, who, who did that found out that around 4% of men said that their wives had been violent to, towards them. But almost half as many women, or 7% of, 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 of women, said that they had been violent towards their men. Oh, that is... Yeah, that certainly is interesting. And, and uh, I've... Of course, I, I, I can only speculate on, on the uh, on the reason. One is, of course, that it is so humiliating for a man to have been beaten by a, a, a woman that they won't uh, they won't admit it. But another explanation, which I'm more fond of, is that 
the men never really felt threatened by the violence of their wives. Perhaps she took an ashtray and, and threw it at them, and they regarded this as just some childish act. I mean, a child can 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 kick you and and uh, it it hurts, but but you're not really afraid. Yeah. So 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 they the women are they they are more they are more ready to call something uh, violence because they are more afraid of it than uh, than than men are, even though they are the uh, perpetrators. But but the men don't see it as a problem because they can easily handle uh, an angry uh, angry woman. Mm. Is uh, there uh, if I'm being uh, abused is there a, a telephone number or something i can text that's nationwide to say help yes yes yes, yes there is and the, uh, the the icelandic uh, police has been changing their routines very radically regarding uh, regarding domestic violence and domestic abuse and uh, uh, so they, they they come directly, and it's not just they that that come. If there's a child in the in the household, someone comes from the child protection agency, and then they phone uh, a couple of days later to talk to the uh, talk to the uh, woman and talk to the men, and they distribute the leaflets uh, on, on for the treatment for the for the violent uh, violent men. And of course, inform the uh, woman about the women's shelter and, and uh, take her to the shelter if, if if that is what she wants. Mm. They, they've been getting much, much, much better at at, at at this. Perhaps because we 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 have had women as as uh, as uh, heads of police for for a couple of years, no, mm. more than a decade or something. Mm. In in the states, the police used to think. Domestic violence is a personal, private issue. We don't want to get involved in it, but I think that's changing here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're we'll way past that. Yeah, good. Um, you mentioned that there's 10, 11 men's studies journals. Do they come out of academia? Who, who's writing, who's publishing, who's supporting those journals? Yeah, yeah. Internationally, uh, uh, I meant uh, uh, you had a list of, of, of some of those, uh, some of those. Uh, uh, yes, they are coming from international uh, publishers, Shades and uh, uh, Taylor and Francis and, and, uh, and so on. And who who do you um, look to? I mean, if you were going to subscribe or read from the library, just a couple of those journals which would be on the top of your list is the most interesting? I would take men and masculinities and Norma. Mm. Um, and when you when you read these journals, do you see that that they come from a masculinist approach, feminist approach, equalist approach? Um, it, do you see a kind of um, ideological approach to dealing with with gender that that predominates because so i think what i see in the states is a lot of times academics and men's studies are pro-feminist and then the men's rights people say they they don't really look at men's real issues they're only thinking of how women are victimized oh okay well, I, at least those two that I uh, mentioned, and I think that the great majority of the of the others uh, are feminist or or, or pro uh, pro feminist, uh, but perhaps with more uh, emphasis on gender equality in 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 general. I mean, I, I think that they have written and 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 uh, or or published articles on important men's issues such as, as uh, uh, such as parental or paternity leave and and, uh, and they've also published articles about uh, the violence that men uh, when when men are the victims of, of, of violence both of, from other men and from and from women 
and uh, and structural violence, such as being forced to be in a, in, in, in armies and and, uh, and so on and, and so forth. So uh, I, I think those men's rights uh, groups that you mentioned, they just haven't read them. Uh, they haven't what? Pardon? They haven't read the the journals. Ah. They should they should read them more carefully. Ah. Um. Well, I think there's something to be said to their point that um, men's, well, I, I'm just reading a professor who said a woman came to university, I think in Canada, to talk about men's studies, men's issues, and she was booed. Um, there were protests. She wasn't allowed to speak. I guess the thought that she was talking about men's issues was automatically assume that she's anti-feminist. So I, I, I think there's something to be said for the fact that, um, that in just focusing on how women are harmed by men, it, it doesn't get to the way men are harmed by gender, traditional gender roles. Well, yes, probably. I mean, I, I, I don't think we can talk about women's issues or men's issues without taking the other or the situation of the other gender into a, a account. I mean, it, it's always, uh, it's always related. That's what uh, I think. The, the, the situation of the of, of women affects the situation of men and vice versa. So, so and, and we've never had that problem. With, 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 we have had a, a, a Nordic uh, uh, group or or, uh, or uh, society for for studies on men and, and, and masculinity and, and uh, we have had uh, I guess around 50-50 men and uh, men and women and it has never been seen as a problem and I mean uh, I can easily join in in in, in feminist discussions both here and and in uh, 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 in conferences and, and, and so on, and, and I can talk about men or I can talk about women. And that's not a problem. What's wrong with those Canadians? <laughs> well, I, I, I think that, it, that it, his point was it happens in the States a lot too, that, that, um, that people are afraid to bring up men's issues because they'll be seen as anti-woman, which isn't True. What, what um, like in the States, there's hardly any men's studies programs or courses. I've been trying to find a list and Michael Flood in Australia has a list of 17 course syllabi from different years. But what, what, what's the men's studies in academia current situation in Iceland? Well, of course, we are very few, so so so, so it's uh, it's not much specialization. Uh, I teach a course on on men and masculinities, uh, given every other year, uh, usually mainly attended by women. <laughs> that's what that's typical. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think that most or all of my colleagues. Uh, uh, both in uh, sociology, anthropology, uh, folkloristics, uh, education, history. They all talk about gender, uh, gender issues and, and uh, uh, the situation of both men and, and, and women uh, in, these, uh, in this area. I mean, it's, it's just fully accepted that gender is a major factor in all social life. And, and, uh, but specialized specialized courses, I, I, I doubt that there's any other than the, than the one that I'm teaching. Oh, wow. Um, do you have your course syllabus online? I mean, do you have a link to it that you, because I would love to see your syllabus and your texts and your topics. It is on the, it is online, but uh, of course it's in Icelandic. Ah, um, do you do you remember offhand what books you use? 
I've used different books, but most often I've used the book by Connell, Masculinities. And who wrote that? Uh, uh, Roald Connell, the Australian. Ah. And what other uh, are your favorite texts? Uh, ba -ba 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 I like to look. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I've used this one, Men and Masculinities, it's called Chris Haywood and Martin McCann Gale. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this with the same name, Men and Masculinities, Stephen Whitehead. Mm. But, uh, but but this is the this is the one that I most often used, the, the one by Connell. Mm. Mm. And, and, and really, I mean, he, he, is, he is the guru in, 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 in Europe, or at least in, in the Nordic, Nordic countries. And he's an Aussie? Yes. Interesting. Um, when you are teaching this class, what topics really excite the students where they go, oh, yeah, let's talk about that? <laughs> um, well, uh, violence engages them. Uh, sex and sexualities uh, engages them. And, uh, and fatherhood. Uh, I think th those are the main, uh, main oh, issues. The fatherhood. Oh, fatherhood. Uh-huh. Um, what I hear sometimes from women, young women, is there's no good men out there. There's not men who want to commit. There's Peter Pans. Do you hear that kind of criticism from your students, your women students? No, no, uh, no, no, not really. Uh, and I, I usually begin the course by asking them what they connect uh, with the word uh, masculinities uh, and they well they're shy of course but in the end I, I, I get get some suggestions and they're usually positive oh. they're usually positive uh, things that they uh, they mention uh, strength uh, um, Protective, supportive. Protective, yes. Uh, and, uh, oh, they, they which uh, I, I, I had a colleague in, 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 in Great Britain who taught a similar course and, and he also also did this. And, and he said uh, they usually take up something negative, alcoholism, uh, violence, abuse, and, and, and so on. Wow. But my students, uh, they, they don't. They don't. That's the beauty of living in a, such an egalitarian country. Um, I, yeah. I, I appreciate your patience. I, I want to talk about your books to kind of close. So one of your books is Gender Equality in the Nordic Countries. Anything to add from that book that we haven't talked about that explains there's an issue in gender equality in the Nordic countries? I have to admit that I had completely forgotten about that, that, that book. Uh, I, I must have edited it. I, I didn't write any book uh, that's called that, but it may have been the editor. Um, no, I don't think there's anything to really to, uh, to add, but perhaps the most interesting thing is the 
general agreement in the Nordic countries that gender equality is something worthwhile and, and something that we should strive for and something that we should use the means of the state to achieve. Right, 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 right. Um, you wrote, I, I don't know if this is a book or an article, Gender Changes from Rigid Roles to Negotiations. Yeah, that, that's, an, that's an article. And what, uh, what, what do you mean by negotiations? Because you, you've seen these changes happen in a positive way. So how? What I was trying to argue uh, there was that almost, oh, oh no, that in, in effect, everything regarding uh, the situation of genders was up for negotiations now. That when uh, an Icelandic man and an Icelandic woman uh, decide to, uh, to live together, uh, there is it has not been decided beforehand if the man is going to work and the uh, woman is going to be at home, if it's going to be 50-50 or 70-30 or, or whatever, and they, uh, they discuss it. They discuss it and they negotiate and, and nothing is given. Uh, and, and, uh, I mean, I, I've interviewed couples who they sit down on, on, on a Sunday afternoon and, and, and they go through the next week and decide who is going to do what and some of them even write it down and, and put on the uh, refrigerator yeah. uh, so and it can be this way this week and another way the next week and, and so on and so forth so, so, so they, they, they don't seem to be stuck in uh, any pre-given roles Mm. Um, in in the Western world, a kind of a new phenomena for young people is gender fluidity. I'm non-binary. I'm trans. Um, and I I wonder if Icelandic teens are do, doing the same kind of gender fluidity exploration. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, I don't think all that many of them, but 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 it is fully accepted, and uh, as a matter of fact, we have been we have been working on changing uh, many laws to remove uh, the, the 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 phrases "man" and or, or or "women" or something uh, something like that. So. Uh, uh, the the law on gender equality, for uh, for example, in, uh, never mentions men and uh, or, or 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 women now as it used to uh, used to do. So 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 we have been working uh, towards uh, eliminating gender from from uh, from our laws. Uh, yeah. So 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 all and and uh, people now as they probably can in, 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 in the States, can decide if they want to uh, acknowledge themselves as a man or a woman or something else. That, that, uh, that option is open. But again, not many are doing it. But the option is there. Mm. Um, my grandson is 11, and he knows two... I don't want to call them girls, people who are born female <laughs> who identify as non-binary. I thought, well, that's really young at 12 to decide your gender preference. But um, the, the other thing that I noticed about his generation, and I bet it's the same in Iceland, is they don't care about your ethnicity, your gender. They just see you as a person. So he has a friend who's who's african-american who has like green hair and i don't think it even occurs to him that his skin is darker it's just just like a non-issue okay do, do you, oh. I, I i imagine that that you see that as well that kids are especially comfortable with diversity or maybe you don't have diversity too much <laughs> Well, it's a it's it's a fairly new phenomenon in in uh, in Iceland. 
so 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 we we don't really have any uh, a lot of experience but i mean it, it, children don't give a shit about the color of their skin they have to be taught that th- there's something wrong with being dark skinned right but you you're having more refugees now right from islamic yes. countries so is yes. that is that an easy assimilation process or not well they're not all that many uh, yet and, and i don't we, we've at least not seen any 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 major problems uh, so far uh, uh, but of course we 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 have uh, islamophobia in, in in iceland as in, in other other western countries but, but they they don't have a mosque uh, yet, but they have this. Uh, had, had, uh, they've been given uh, a place to raise uh, one or build to build one, uh, but they are so few that they, that they haven't managed to do it uh, do it uh, yet. And uh, there were some protests a few years ago when they when they got that uh, building permission, uh, but. Uh, very few attended, and uh, it was just uh, they threw a pig's head uh, on the on the site where the uh, mosque was supposed to, to to stand, and uh-huh. it was so silly that it was, uh, I think most people laughed. Ah, uh, um, a, a real issue in the Western world, at least, is growing teen anxiety and depression, especially for girls. Is, is that a, a problem there or not? Because there's so many social supports. Well, the surveys that we have had, they, they indicate that uh, this is growing and particularly among, uh, among young uh, women. Uh, mainly it seems to be a, a body issue, that they, they, they're not, uh, they're not happy with their body. But we are, of course, talking about 14, 15, 16 year old uh, old girls. And it's social uh, media aggravates the problem. Yes, yes, it does. Uh, and it's very difficult to see what we can do uh, about it. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, it's not something that affects the majority of, 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 of girls or anything like that. Uh, probably about 10, 10, 12 percent or, or something, something like that, that, that say that they are unhappy with their, uh, with their body. Um, but um, the, the, the pressure from the social media, media and, and, and media in general on, on, on women to, well, perhaps not look a certain way, but certainly not look this way or or, or, or that way. Like overweight. Uh, yeah, or, or being being too fat or or or, or, or too thin or or, or 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 whatever. But I I ask my students uh, if they if they feel any pressure to. Uh, be a certain uh, certain way because they are, are are women or dress in a certain way. They don't. Uh, they, they say that they don't. And <laughs> it, okay, uh, I have a I have a master student from from Greece, and and uh, I was asking her uh, when she had finished her studies if she intended to 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 return. And she said, no, I, I, I'm never going back to, uh, to Greece. Okay, why not? <clears throat> because here in Iceland and in the Nordic countries, he has also been in, in, in Sweden, I can go out in the evening or at night and I can paint myself or I can go out without out painting. I can be dressed in, an, in, in, in a dress or I can be in jeans and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> in, 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 in Greece, I would, I would be frowned upon. People would point at me and, and, and criticize for the, my, me for the, for the way I, I looked. And um, I thought this was, in a, in a way, a, a, a 
wonderful tribute to to the situation in in uh, in Iceland. Absolutely, I I don't know about there, but here there's uniforms like on the university campus. They mostly wear like yoga pants, those tight those tights, sweatshirts, or jeans. I mean, so they all pretty much dress the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, my, most of, of, of my students wear jeans. I mean, jeans are very comfortable and, and uh, fairly cheap. So, it, but, but some uh, often or, or always come in 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 in, 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 uh, with, in a skirt or, or dress or, or or what what whatever. Uh, the women, I mean, the, <laughs> the men are, are 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 much more conservative. Than they. <laughs> I've only once had, had a student that came, male student that came in a skirt. Mm. But, uh, but he, know, he was very special. The, the Scottish kilts are really very masculine. You know, they, they, they're, you see a man, a Scottish man in a kilt, you don't think skirt, you think, hmm, he's, he's a warrior. Um, yeah, yeah. So with all this equality, is there no need for a women's movement? Is there are is there feminist groups, and if so, what are they focusing on that they don't have? There are feminist uh, groups, most most certainly, but they are very different from what they were before. They, they, they are mainly um, ad hoc. Uh, they they take up one one issue and and. Um, use social media main, main, mainly to get the message uh, across and, and but they uh, they are fierce uh, often and, and, and they have they have made uh, they made a difference and, and they they stirred things up they mainly focus today on on uh, on violence sexual violence and uh, and abuse do they use the uh, too, hashtag yeah, that that was a big movement in in, in Iceland, yes, um, and they managed. <laughs> just a, a few weeks ago, they managed to get three of our uh, uh, footballers, in, uh, members of the of the Icelandic national team, to get them out of the uh, out of the team uh, because they said they they have been accused of uh, sexual violence. They shouldn't play for uh, for Iceland. And and uh, that was decided. It was decided to take them out uh, while the uh, issue was uh, investigated. Uh, and th this caused a heavy debate, of, of, of course. And, and there are well, there are issues in in, in, in all of this. But it also led to uh, we having the first. Uh, woman as the president of the Icelandic Football Association, uh, so that she, she could clean up after after the after the yeah. night. <laughs> it, in the U.S., I would say the most, the largest men's groups are ones like the Mankind Project, where they have weekend warrior trainings, like male initiation, and then ongoing groups to support men in their emotional development. Are there groups like that there? No, no. The only the only men's group that we uh, have is uh, the one that uh, focuses on uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, is it child custody after divorce? Yeah, child custody. Yes, yes, yes. Men that think that they have, uh, they, they don't have access to their children or not as much access as they want to, and they, uh, and that the system is not supportive of them, even though their rights are being uh, violated, and and uh, often they are right. Uh, there's no question. Uh, uh, about, about that, we have a very slow working system in this area in, in, in Iceland. That it is generally acknowledged that this is something that we we need to change. Uh, that the, the, the system more quickly uh, than it does now uh, 
interferes so that if men have the right to be with their children uh, after after the wars, uh, they, they 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 are to be helped to to use that right. I think they're the most passionate in the states as well. The the yeah. fathers, the fathers' rights people. Um, yeah. I have twice, when, when I was working at, at the Center for Gender Equality, it happened twice that people that came to the, uh, to the office and talked to me, uh, that they cried. Uh, one was a woman who had recently found out that her co-worker was paid uh, much more than, uh, than she got. And she said, I, I, I read about this, but I never thought that I would experience it. And then she cried. And the other was a uh, was a father who was completely losing touch with his his, his uh, son, and um, the major problem there was that his son had uh, had hearing uh, problems, and uh, his mother was moving with him to another country, and and, and the father said it's 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 an under civilized country. He won't get the help that he, he that he needs. I think he was right. And what happened? But I couldn't. No. I couldn't do anything. There, there was nothing that I could do in, in 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 this case. The mother probably left with the with the child. Mm. Oh, that's painful. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like people to know about men's issues, gender issues, equality issues that we haven't talked about? No, I think we pretty much covered it, but. Uh, Perhaps the main point is that uh, uh, there is uh, Icelandic men feel fine. Uh, uh, I, I think most of them feel that they have gained uh, by uh, the steps that we've taken uh, towards gender equality. Uh, it's better for all of us that uh, women are as free as they uh, as they are. Uh, so, so in re reality, uh, we, we <laughs> men and women who, who, who support gender equality, they have every reason to work together. And, and, uh, and we are slowly <laughs> moving in the right direction. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. Um, okay, well, I learned a lot. I really appreciate this. Let's stay in touch. And um, I'll send you the YouTube link shortly. Okay, great. Thank you so much. It was lovely meeting you. Thank you, same. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.